Very good morning to you, church. Hallelujah. I think uh, Pastor Sherry already preached my message today. When he told you, uh, lean not to your own understanding, that's the topic of the uh, message today. Just that, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, that is the B part. We'll start with the B part, and at the end, we will look at the A part later on. Lord, we thank you for this morning. Lord, your sons and daughters need to hear you, not a word of a man. Lord, for today, we need to hear directly from you, Lord, what you have to say to each one of us, the situations that we might be in. And we know that you have the answers to every question, everything that we might be going through, Lord. Lord, we commit this hour into your hands. Have your way, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, he says, says, Lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding. Where is our understanding come from? We need to know what understanding we have up to this moment. Because we might be thinking that we are so right and can be so wrong. We, I am going to look at a passage, Luke chapter 20. Look at a group of people who were stuck in their own understanding and their own traditions. And they missed the boat. Very, very dangerous. So there's a call today. And as I said the earlier service, I have been hearing this call louder and clearer and getting louder and louder. Is God's call to know Him. That's the first call. We can be busy trying to do God's ministry and our office work and family matters and it can be. But first call is to know Him. Do we know him the way we ought to know him or we know about him? That's a big difference. Jesus did not come to give us a religion. He came to reconcile man to God. That's a relationship. That's a relationship. God walked in the coolness of the day with Adam and Eve. And here comes one day and Adam is not to be found. They are hiding. They are hiding because they recognize themselves naked. What happened? What happened was the senses had taken over. God asked, who told you you are naked? Did you eat of the tree I told you not to eat? And immediately, as some of us do, not me, it's her, and asked, God asked, Eve, what have you done? What did she say? She said, the serpent deceived me. And serpent didn't have a foot to stand on. He was condemned. And as a result, we know what mankind suffered. Woman, you shall bear child with pain. Man, you should earn your bread with sweat. And there was this curse. But thank God for Jesus. He came to reverse the curse as far as it was found. Amen to that. What an exchange on the cross. And today it is for us to know who we are in Christ Jesus. And to receive what is f made freely available to us. So the note today or the message this morning is for us to hear his call. And for us to have the discernment that can come only by hearing what the Lord has to say to us. Things of the Lord are not learned but they are discerned. We need to know what he has to say to us today. Because there are so many voices all around us. How do you know 
that there is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Can you judge from outside unless you have the discernment? So we need to have the discernment. We need to spend time with the Lord to get to know Him and to know who we are in Christ Jesus. I'm into that. So today the challenge is we are called not to lean on to our own understanding. Wherever the scripture says do not, we ought not to. Do not lay treasures on earth where the moth can eat and the rust can destroy and the thief can steal. Do not. Do not lean on to your own understanding. Do not commit adultery. Do not, do not. When we do what we are called not to do, we are in danger. There is no partial obedience. There is nothing called partial obedience. We need to hear God's voice and obey as we ought to. So looking at... Let's first establish the fact that the Word of God is the inspired Word of God and is profitable for doctrine as 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 says. We have to establish that fact. We are standing on the Word as given to us and there is no, nothing else that we can stand on. You agree with me? Nothing. This is the word that we need to stand on. So it says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Verse 17 says that the man of God may be complete. We ought to be complete, thoroughly equipped. Do we need to be equipped today? Because our fight is not against flesh and blood, against principalities and powers. And our weapons that we fight are not carnal. We need to be equipped. And that is by the word of God. Amen? So, equipped for every good work. Good work which God has purposed even before the time began. Do you know that you have a purpose in your life? Do you believe that? If you don't believe, you can put your hand and we can have a word after the service. There is no one here without a purpose of God. We can thank God today that we are among the living because there is unaccomplished business. Some have already called. They have graduated. They are gone to be with the Lord. They are not coming back. We will go to them. If you are still here today, there is yet work to be done unaccomplished business that we ought to be doing. And we need to know what that is. How will you know unless you spend time to hear the heartbeat of God, what He has to say to us? You know, we are asked to be transformed by the renewal of our minds. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 be Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. How many of you want to know the will of God for your life? Very few of you. You need to know God's will. Otherwise, we'll be running behind things like chasing the wind. As King Solomon said, everything is foolishness to him. Running behind the wind, you cannot catch. You may gain the whole world but lose your soul and what gaineth if that happens? Before it is too late. There is a time under the sun for everything to be born. We can be called any time. We do not know of our tomorrow. Anyone knows your tomorrow? None of us. So the time is ticking. God is calling us to know Him and do not lean on to your own understanding. 
Luke chapter 20. Jesus was teaching and preaching the gospel in the temple courts. The chief priests and the teachers of the law, together with the elders, ask a question. They have come to Jesus to ask a question. The question is, tell us by what authority you are doing these things. Who gave you this authority? You need to have some imagination here. Imagine the tonality of the words that they might have spoken. I don't think that they were speaking in soft words. They must have been so upset. Why? Because end of chapter 19, when you can read, when Jesus entered the temple, what did he find? For people, it was business as usual. They were selling things. And Jesus turned their tables upside down, made a whip, and drove them out and said, My house ought to be the house of prayer. You have made into a den of thieves. They were continuing their traditions. They were leaning on to their own understanding. And they did not recognize the visitation of the Lord. How come that this could happen? Did they not know what Isaiah wrote in the scripture? Were not, I mean, they were the keepers of the temple. They were the high priest, the aristocrats, who occupied Majority of the seats in the Sanhedrin. They kept record. Did they not know that the scripture said. Virgin sh shall bear a child. He shall be Emmanuel God with us. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Did they not know. Here they missed. That. And there were Pharisees, all of them, they are asking this question from Jesus. Who gave you this authority? Jesus, in turn, asked a question from them. Asked them, was the baptism of John from heaven or from man? I need to give you a little bit of background to this, what made Jesus to ask. You need to see that Jesus was wrestling with their hearts. To open their hearts and their minds to understand the times that they were living in. Kingdom is at hand. Jesus Christ was there and they failed to understand. Jesus is trying to draw their attention to see the heaven's connection here. And they were talking among themselves to what answer can we give? If we say the baptism is from heaven, they will ask, why didn't you then believe? What was the message of John the Baptist? Kingdom is at hand. Repent and be baptized. The one who comes after me, I'm not worthy to untie his sandals. I'm baptizing you with water, but he shall baptize you with fire. Did they not know that? But they said, if we say that he is a man, the baptism is from man, they were afraid of the people. They would have stoned them to death because the people knew that he's a prophet. What was the answer? Sometimes we give the answer. The easiest answer to be politically right or safe, we don't know. That's the answer they gave. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, neither will I tell you from where I have this authority. It would have been in vain for Jesus to have explained. They failed to understand John the Baptist, what he was doing, and that this is from heaven. How could Jesus have said that I am the son of the living God? Would they have taken it in? It would have been too much for them to take. So, do not lean on to your own understanding.
Isaiah chapter 40 verse 3. Isaiah had said, Voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. What they have, you know, they were duplicating the word. They were custodians. They were keeping record. They were the high priest and the keepers of the temple. The question is, did they not know? How can one be so blind and not know? Can it happen to us? Can it happen to us? That's a cautionary note. To get to the word, to depth of it, that today for each one of us to know deeper than we have known Christ Jesus any time before. To know him. That's the call for us. Jesus starts to talk to them about something that is happening right there at that time. The parable, but he gave it in the form of a parable. That is, the wicked tenants. Man planted a vineyard and let it out to tenants and goes to another country. At the time of the harvest, he sent the servants. The first one comes, he gets beaten up and he was sent empty-handed. So the owner of the vineyard sends the second servant. He too was beaten up and treated shamefully and he sent back empty-handed. Third, the same, he was wounded and cast out. But then the owner sends his own son thinking that they will probably respect my son. Isn't that what happened? Who owns this world that we live in? The creator of the heavens and the earth. Isn't he? Our Father, Creator God. Cattle on a thousand hills belongs to Him. Silver and gold therein belongs to Him. He sent His only Son. This is the week that Jesus was going to be betrayed and going to the cross. And Jesus is trying to draw their attention to understand. And they saw Him come. They said, we will kill him. This is the heir. We will kill him and we will have the inheritance. Isn't that what they did? What when they saw him, they said to themselves, this is the heir. Let us kill him so that, so that the inheritance may be ours. They threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Their eyes were not yet open. The scribes and the chief priests sought to lay hands on him at the very hour, for they perceived that he had told this parable against them, but feared the people. They knew that Jesus spoke about them, but they failed to understand he is and was the Messiah. Luke 20 they now are trying to find a way to trap Jesus. 20 verse 20 through 26. They are looking for a way. Verse 20 says, Then they closely watched him and sent spies who pretended to be sincere. Spies were sent to Jesus, pretended to be sincere, that they might catch him in something he said, so as to deliver him up to the authority and jurisdiction of the governor. That was their plan. To somehow trap. So, verse 21, they asked him, Teacher, we know that you speak and teach rightly and show no partiality, but truly teach the way of God. Little bit of flattery here. They are trying to trap Jesus. Verse 22, is it lawful for us to give tribute to Caesar? Jesus seeing the trickery, Jesus seeing their duplicity, asks him, show me a denarius. And ask whose impression is on it. Caesar, they replied. And then Jesus said, give it to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give it to God what belongs to God. They failed to trap Jesus. What an answer Jesus gave. 
well they are still not satisfied so they are coming up with another question luke 20:27 20, through 40 teacher moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife but no children the man must marry the widow and have children there were seven brothers each one they died and last even this wife died finally the woman dies too now then at the resurrection whose wife will she be since the seven were married to her you need to understand these sadducees they did not believe in resurrection they did not believe in afterlife how come this question is coming up now where did they get that from where does our understanding come from from childhood what we have learned from home learned from parents learned from our clan our whoever what we have been taught from in school up to college and then beyond where do we have this can any one of us say that we our understanding is by discernment and by revelation that's what it should be you are very quiet i hope you are receiving our understanding must come by discerning and by revelation the holy spirit who reveals the heart and mind of christ to us is able to reveal matters to us we are called a caution again and again do not lean on to your own understanding they they should have known better but unfortunately they were so fixed in their own understanding where did it come from that there is no afterlife aristocrats the high priest the keeper of the temple and they are mistaken matthew 22 says you are in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of god at the resurrection people will neither marry nor be given in marriage they will be like the angels in heaven but about the resurrection of the dead have you not read what god said to you now jesus is connecting moses here at the bush what happened i'm talking about the burning bush not george bush what did he hear he heard these words i am the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob he is not the god of the dead but of the living they spoke to jesus saying moses wrote to us these things jesus is connecting back to say that moses his encounter with the burning bush their eyes didn't yet open they were so stuck in their own understanding you know when jesus entered jerusalem luke 19:41 through 44 the scripture says jesus wept we know that jesus wept at the lazarus tomb when he died and here is another place jesus weeping if the bible says jesus wept he wept imagine the heart condition of our lord for him to look at jerusalem and weep when he is looking at us from the pavilion of the heavens is he weeping or is he rejoicing at us today he looked at jerusalem and he wept as jesus approached jerusalem and saw the city he wept over it and said if you had only known on this day what would bring you peace 
you must connect these words to what Isaiah hundreds of years back wrote. Isaiah 53 verse 5. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. The punishment that brought us peace peace was upon him and here Jesus is telling only if you, they had known what would bring them peace he the prince of peace is right there and they are failing to understand how can they be so blind Jesus called them you blind guides question before we go to the question let me read the remaining the days will come this is Jesus telling after weeping Come upon you when your enemies will build an embarkment against you and encircle you and hem you in one on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and your children in your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming or time of God's visitation. How many of us miss out on understanding visitations. We ought to be careful. Thank God some did recognize. Moses, when he saw the burning bush, it drew his attention. It is burning but not consumed. He stopped and he looked back. We need to take time to understand. You know the story of Joshua? Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 through 15. Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. What did Joshua ask? Joshua is a fighter. He sees a man with a drawn sword. It would have been easy for Joshua to fight because he's a fighter. But what did he ask? He asked a question. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? What was the reply he got? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. You might be thinking that the battle that you are in is yours. For your information, it was not that God was in Joshua's battle, but Joshua was in God's battle. He is fighting the battle. It, is belong, it belongs to him. Do not misunderstand that. It, there is no battle for you to fight. The only fight that you are called to fight is the good fight of faith. That's the only fight. Battle belongs to the Lord. So understand whatever storm that, as my dear brother spoke, storm that we, that we go through, Jesus is the one who told the disciples, let's get to the other side. And on the way a storm hit. If Jesus had told you to get to the other side, you can be rest assured that you will get to the other side because Jesus said it. If Jesus said, come, you can get off the boat and walk like Peter. If he calls you, you do it. If he has called you, you can do it. If he said, let's cross to the other side, you will cross. Whatever the word that you have received, you can be sure that it will happen. No storm can stop you. They will come because there is someone who is not happy with what's happening. We have an adversary. You need to recognize our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And how do we fight them? Not with carnal weapons. Jesus has given his name to us. At the name of Jesus, every Ye shall bow every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He has shed his blood. The blood was applied on the post and the spirit of death could not enter. We are washed in the blood of Jesus. Aren't we? We are. No one can penetrate the blood of Jesus. And he has given us the word. We can speak the word and things will happen. What the word says here is true and it's a rock you can stand on. Amen? You can send forth the word. It will not return back to you void. 
the words you speak the promise is i will come and confirm the words with signs and wonders the words you speak out will not fall to the ground so you can take the liberty you can be strong you can speak to the word and say this should not be you are supposed to resist and the evil will flee amen that's the word not no need for us to fight just resist so thank god what happened to joshua and the story that goes that the commander of the lord's army right take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy and joshua did that what did he say we now he said what message you have for us for you to be able to ask the message that god has for you you need to take time to speak to him you need to take time before him you need to be still and know that he is god if you lose yourself in your own understanding get panicky you will try to swim the red sea what will happen it will be good white meat for the fish but you need to ask god to open the red sea and he will open it for you and you cross on dry ground and what will happen to the chariots they will all be drowned there's a promise that he will lead you and guide you with his righteous right hand no one will be able to snatch you out of his hands that's a promise well jesus is wrestling he's wrestling with their hearts to open their hearts and their minds to understand one last chance jesus is trying before he goes to the cross so he asks another question he asks it is chapter 20 verse 41 sorry yes then jesus said to them how is it that they say the christ is the son of david one more try jesus is giving david himself declared in the book of psalms the lord said to my lord sit at my right hand until i make sure enemies of your know, enemies a footstool for your feet david calls him lord david a thousand years back spoke this Mark chapter 12 verse 36 David himself speaking by the holy spirit by the holy spirit we need the leading of the holy spirit Jesus asked a question in Luke chapter 16 verse 13 when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi he asked his disciples who do people say the son of man is they replied some say John the Baptist others say elijah and still others say jeremiah or one of the prophets today this question is in front of each one of us jesus told them what do you say and peter replied he said you are the son of the living god you are christ the son of the living god Jesus replied blessed are you Simon son of Jonah for this was not revealed to you by man but by my father in heaven we need to hear what the lord has to say the holy spirit has to reveal you must have discernment and you need to have understanding how deep you know Jesus Do you know him as your savior? Do you know him as bread of life? Do you know him as the fountain that will never cease? Do you know him as the Passover lamb? Do you need know him as your redeemer, as your sustainer, as the comfort? Do you know him the way you ought to know him? There is a call for you today for you to know him. the way you ought to now let me touch on part a of the passage we read proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 the first part which i didn't read in the beginning says trust in the lord with all your heart that is what we are supposed to be doing and lean not 
on to your own understanding verse 7 say, 6 says in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight do not be wise in your own eyes fear the lord and shun evil this will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones god told joshua do not let the word depart from your heart or from your mouth that you will have success in your life's journey isn't that what we need for us to be successful let us meditate let us chew on his word chewing on his word is christ jesus himself the word that became flesh and came and dwelt among us as you read you get to know him closer than ever before i'm into that so do not lean on to your own understanding but trust in the lord in all that you do amen let's close in prayer have you received word today challenge to not to lean on but to trust the lord in all that you do amen lord we thank you for your word thank you for the challenge to know you lord we know that you long for us to approach you we know that your love for us is beyond measure mountains may be shaken but your love for us will never be shaken lord we want to thank you for that amazing love that caused you to go to the cross what an exchange you took it all on you lord we just want to say thank you today we pray lord draw us close to you that we will taste and see how good you are to know you deeper than ever before lord i commit every brother every sister into your hands even the families represented for your protection for your leading for your guidance for your anointing upon each one that they will go and be a lighthouse lord in the marketplace that they will shine forth in this dark world that they to the others will know that there is but one the only one to the father lord we thank you today for all that you have done and you are doing and all that you have released for your children more than we could ask or imagine in jesus mighty name amen amen may the love of god almighty the fellowship of our lord and savior jesus christ and the power the dunamis power of the holy spirit be with each one of us now and forevermore amen and amen